The major story, of course, in this fight will be Ray Mercer, the 1988 gold medal winner in the heavyweight division in Seoul. Here's more about Ray with Al. Olympic gold medalist Ray Mercer is coming back from a minor shoulder injury and in what for him is a layoff of almost three months. Will we see the Mercer who is a devastating puncher? Or will he be forced to earn a win the hard way as he did here against Ozzy Ocasio? This in a less than scintillating split decision win. Against Camille Odom, this 29-year-old dominated the action. But he couldn't put Odom away. The right, as always, was Mercer's calling card. And finally, in the 11th round, it produced a knockdown. But a bruised muscle in the shoulder area caused his layoff after this decision win, and he hopes to get right back to his winning ways tonight against Lionel Washington. And the diehard keys to victory, Al? Well, for Ray Mercer, he wants to test that right shoulder early, I think. Find out just how well it can perform the right hand. It's an important weapon for him. Don't fade in the later rounds. It's been a problem for him. For Washington, the right is his big weapon. And I think he should move to the right to stay away from Mercer's right hand. Mercer has not cut off the ring well in recent fights. If he moves to his right, he'll be in better shape. And now for the introductions of our first fight of the night, Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome the Rochester Community War Memorial here in Rochester, Where tonight, Top Rank Incorporated and the undisputed King of Beers, Budweiser, presents a professional boxing tour at your entertainment. These bouts are sanctioned by the New York State Athletic Commission. The chairman is Randy Gordon. Commissioner of Ringside, Herb Washington. Deputy Commissioner, former welterweight champion of the world, Billy Backus. Chief Inspector Tom Hoover. We the three judges hear. doing all the scoring tonight will be Don Ackerman, Don Nautiker, and Ruben Garcia. Positions at ringside, Dr. Melvin King and Dr. Reginald Ewing. The timekeeper for all the bouts is James Budd, and the alternate referee will count for the knockdown seconds. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's get things started with ten rounds in the heavyweight division. The referee for this first bout is Frank Adams. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, he's wearing the black trunks with white letters and weighs an even 234 pounds. From Bakersfield, California, as a professional, he's got 10 victories against 6 defeats, and 9 of his 10 victories are by KO. Let's hear it for Lionel Washington! And his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. He's wearing the black trunks with gold letters and weighs an even 221 pounds. He's a 1988 Olympic gold medal champion. Originally from Jacksonville, Florida, now fighting for the triple threat gym in Essex County, New Jersey. As a professional, undefeated with a record of 14-0, 10 KOs, he currently holds the IBF Intercontinental Championship. That title not on the line. Ladies and gentlemen, the undefeated Merciless Ray Mercer. in the dressing room. I want a good, clean fight. Shake hands now, and good luck to both of them. Ray Mercer. A lot of questions still about him. How legitimate a contender is he down the road? At the moment, he is ranked number 11 by the IBF, and Lionel Washington enters this ring tonight with a record of 10-6, 9 knockouts. Mercer immediately go to his jab. He has a punishing jab. And he is on with that punch when it really lands well. It hurts opponents. And there you see right it. There. Wasting no time. And you can see that Ray Mercer with that terrific power. He has just been wading through a lot of people as a professional. Um, although he had to go 12 against Camille Odom and two fights before that against uh, he knocked out Wesley Watson but against Ocasio and Jones had to go the distance as well. 
Ocasio's a real lackluster performance uh, on the undercard of Leonard Duran, but it was about 40 degrees in Las Vegas that night, and it was a lackluster card, and I think a lot to be blamed on the weather, and there's a solid right hand and a solid left by Ray Mercer. Well, Ray has tremendous power in that right, and I talked about him testing it early. He is doing that to be sure. He's thrown about three or four really good right hands. Yeah, the Ocasio fight certainly was one that probably put doubts in people's minds, but then Ocasio's a tough man to fight. Tremendous hook by Mercer. One gets a sense early here in the first round that Mr. Washington may not be around for long. He's getting nailed with some big shots by Ray, although he didn't, his knees weren't buckled. Halfway through the first round. Ray has come in at 220 pounds, which is about five pounds over his last fight. This is the heaviest he's fought at. He hurt his, um, he strained a, a muscle in his calf and couldn't run for about a week and a half. So that hurt him in the, the weight department. He is just over six feet tall, Ray Mercer, but really doesn't look it. He's a stocky fellow, as you can see. Lionel Washington's about 6'4". Washington is allowing Mercer to establish the jab without any problem here. And boy, that's where it'll come from. It. Good right hand. Mercer trying to make some quick work out of line of Washington. Traveled all the way across the country for this event. Lionel from Bakersfield, California. Mentioned his last time out against Michael Dokes. He lost by a KO in the eighth, but had his moments against Dokes. He has fought against some reasonably big names. Unfortunately, against all of them, he faced a defeat. So the first round from Rochester is in the books, and we'll be back for round two. Ray Mercer, going with the lead right hand here, it doesn't get there, but see, this is what they have to like. He continues the assault, lands the jab in a straight right. Those last two punches are punches he might not have thrown at the beginning of his pro career. So we begin round two. Ray Mercer in search of his 15th win and his 11th knockout. And they're just over us now. You see those total punches, and I was handed a, a statistic that startled me from our punch profile people, Bob Kenobi and Logan Hobson, that 63 of Washington's 83 punches were jabs. I was actually surprised Washington threw 83 punches. Yeah. It didn't seem like he threw that many in that round. So, although well, he, he certainly didn't land me. No, he didn't. But then, oh, there's a nice body combination. Yeah. Ray Mercer, who has been criticized in the past for not going to the body as much as he might, um, shows us there why that is so, why he should be going to the body. He's a good body puncher. This is Mercer's first fight in three months. After injuring a shoulder. But at this point, he's showing no ill effects. And he's sparred nearly 100 rounds to get ready for this fight. It's comeback fight, really. And that a man that uh, fought 12 times in 1989, so he's used to being very active. Well, he has an accelerated program at the age of 29. He's got to get a lot of work done in a hurry as he approaches senior citizen status among the heavyweights. But then again, it's all relative with George Foreman in town. Hey, he's 41 years old and he's still going at it. But no, they are, of course, looking to move ahead quicker than you might otherwise. And of course, with the Olympic gold medal, it made him marketable enough to, to you do this accelerated program. They ran into some, some bumpy parts of the road. Oh, oh. Solid right. Now, Lionel Washington standing up to those right hands, and it's going to be very important as this fight wears on. We saw another man, Jerry Jones, do that in West Orange, New Jersey, against uh, Mercer, and while he ended up beating Jones, Jones did nail him with some shots over the course of that fight. Washington has not set down on his punches very well so far, Charlie. He's just pawing with those punches. Hasn't really landed a significant shot for the first two rounds. Inside a half a minute. Left in round two. It's a ten-round fight. And he 
again, pulling away. Lionel Washington. As we come to the end of the second round, here at the War Memorial in Rochester, New York, Mercer and Washington, round three, back in a minute. The Mercer jab, we talked about it, it can be punishing. He slips the jab of Washington and delivers his own quite well, I might add. Round three of the scheduled ten-round fight. Ray Mercer and Lionel Washington, and Mercer fairly well has had his way. And that's the first significant shot of the night by Lionel Washington. in a heap of trouble. But his legs don't buckle, although his eyes were blinking a lot. And if Mercer had not slapped with one of those right hands, he might have had Washington down. That begins to raise the question about the health of the right shoulder and the power or lack of save coming from it. Because he did land solidly a couple of times. He's thrown, but the times when he's landed the right hand, some of them have not been as straight as he would like. So, I mean, when he throws a slapping right, it's not going to get the same impact as when he throws that straight right. When he throws that straight right, Mercer's right is part. There, there it is. Yeah, that one hurt him. See, but Washington comes right back. Yeah, and what Ray Mercer did there was he lapsed into just brawling and did, didn't keep his composure as well as he might when he had Washington hurt. And Lionel, a veteran who's been in, as we said, he's faced the cannons with the Dokes and the Weavers and the like. He knows what it is to, to be in trouble and have to try and fight his way back. And some blood now trickling out of the nose of Lionel Washington. Just over a minute left in round three. Mercer is uh, doing a paint job, though, on Lionel Washington. He's landing, you know, what he wants. Oh, wow, what a right. And Washington does not go anywhere. That was a good right hand by Mercer. Just a little wide, but I'll tell you, that one had some power. So what does that tell you either about the chin of Lionel Washington or the strength of the right shoulder of Ray Mercer? Well, you know, Washington is taking some excellent shots. And of course, when you move up, guys don't go, go down quite so easy. Less than a half a minute to go. Third round. And there's where Washington's going to have to be more effective, countering as Mercer comes in. Just when he has him on the inside. And remember that Washington has to get some power in his right hand as well. Oh, well, that's the end of the third round, and Ray Mercer back him back to his point. the jab a little more. Work to the body. I want the right hand to the body. But out to jab. When you shoot the jab to the head, right hand to the body, hook to the head. Stay there. You stay inside. Don't pull back out. You stay there. You work body head. Body head. Okay? Okay. All right? You got to work hard, though. This is how we're going to get him out of there. But you can't lay back and get him out of there. You got to work hard to get him out of there. Okay? But it's got to start from the body. Early on in the last round, you'll see this right hand get there kind of pushed him back a little bit. It wasn't a great punch, but it got, got Mercer's attention. Ray Mercer landed a big right hand there. Again, you can see that those right hands are delivered fairly well. Not perfect, but fairly well. And there's a slapping right. There's an example. See, look at the form of Ray Mercer. Very bad right there. Not like it was earlier in the round. You see those punches coming wider and slapping, and that's why he didn't knock, knock him down. So we begin round four. Mercer lands by better than a two-to-one margin. More economical with his punches, but uh, more effective. Solid right to the bottom. Before I look at Lionel Washington, more reminds me of Robert Terrence. Ah, very good point. The center for the yeah. Boston. 
himself. Chief. He has a new boss now. Yes, he does. How do you have the fight so far, Al? Huh? All three rounds to Mercer. I can't imagine giving any of those rounds to Washington. And this is why Mercer using the jab. It's punishing and getting his right hand in occasionally. The chairman of the New York State uh, Athletic Commission, Randy Gordon, has urged his judges to be a bit more judicious when it comes to scoring 10-9 or 10-8 or 10-7, perhaps even, rather than a customary 10-9. If uh, the judges feel like it was a dominating round, feel free to score a 10-8, even yeah, without the knockout. He's encouraging that a little bit more. They did that in uh, New Jersey a little while back, but then it kind of reverted back to the 10-9 uh, the system. So if you see scoring that looks a little more divergent than mine, that's the reason. Wow, good solid right hand, and Washington is down. And in significant trouble. This fight should not go on. The legs are very wobbly. He's looking straight at the referee. Oh, my, I don't know. I don't know about this. No, no this fight should Stop be it. over. Stop this it. fight Stop should it. be over, yes. They do. Thank goodness. Well, a lot of oh, Lionel. He's complaining, as, but I'll tell you what, he was in all kinds of trouble, and I really I really don't think that he needed to take too much more. He wasn't punching back, and his eyes were glazed. It'll have to be another night, Lionel. He right. was in trouble. He, you can see the, the bloody nostrils, and the bloody well, mouth, and uh, his eyes were somewhere else. He's a competitor, and he's a tough man, and he has taken big shots from heavyweights, but in this instance, I really think that he was hurt badly. We look at Ray Mercer, who shows us, yes, he's still, he's got that power. This is the first knockdown, or the knockdown. There's the right hand on the top of the head. And as you see another angle, you're going to see Mercer get in what is a very good straight right hand right on the chin. That was as straight a right hand as he has thrown in this bout. You can judge for yourself as we look at the end of this bout as to how hurt Lionel Washington was. Covering up fairly well there, so that would be one reason why you might let the fight continue. And he's fairly clear right there, but earlier when he got up from that knockdown, you could have made a strong case for the fight being stopped then because he was pretty woozy. Well, let's make it official now with Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Frank Adams stops the bout. At 1 minute 59 seconds of the fourth round, the winner by TKO victory. His record now 15 and 0, 11 KOs. Merciless. Ray Mercer. Well, we're going to take a break here in Rochester, and when we come back, Al Bernstein will talk with Ray Mercer. With guest Ray Mercer. Well, Ray Mercer, happy about the outcome of this one, and why shouldn't he be coming back off the shoulder problem, which wasn't a major problem, but was a problem nevertheless. First of all, how did that shoulder hold up? Did it hurt you at all? You landed some good right hand. Uh, first of all, Jack Dell was going fishing, and far as my shoulder is concerned, it's 100%. Okay. And, uh, we had some had therapy. We was off for three weeks, and I had a calf muscle. That's why I went in at 221. But you'll never see me like this again. All right, well, I'll tell you what, the right hand uh, was effective. We'll show you how effective it was against Lionel Washington. Take a look, uh, Ray, and you really nailed him with a beautiful one here. Yeah, I knew I was trying to trying to set him off with the jab because he was going over this way, and I knew if I missed with the hook after the jab, I would catch him with the right hand. It's all in combinations. And you landed the right uh, after that as he was going down. Were you at all surprised that they stopped it? He looked like he was in trouble to us. Uh, I feel like they should have stopped it the first time because yeah. the eyes was a little drowsy. and he was still wobbling. So, you know, that's the name of the game. All I do is just finish him off. How did you feel today, uh, considering the layoff and the fact you came in a little heavier than you normally do, uh, did that? D did you feel that weight at all? Uh, no, I didn't really feel it. I didn't have time. You know, I'm into the later rounds. I'm more experienced boxer than I was when I first started, as you know. And I just took my time, and I knew the punch was going to come, uh, and it came. We worked hard in the gym for three weeks.